Okay, so this is our applique webinar with the queen of appliques, <laughs> Anisha Stauffer. Um, and I will turn it over to her now. Hello, everyone. I am super excited that I get to uh, show you guys how I applique. And um, yeah, there's a few things that, that are, it's actually pretty simple. There, it's just a lot of steps kind of, and uh, it, it takes some time and patience, but uh, I, I just love doing it. I'm the kind of person who will start sewing something and then I'll be like, oh, this is kind of boring or this, I have a tiny little scrap of something that I wanna incorporate into my coordinate. And then I, usually end up spending hours more on a project than it actually takes. But um, applique is super fun embellishment. You can use it for so many different things like on a little bin to see what is in it, label kind of thing, or on a pair of pants as a patch or just as a nice little embellishment on something or to tie some coordinates together, but so many different uses. Um, there are quite a few different kinds of appliques. So there's like there's simple ones, there's layered ones, there's raw edge applique, there's um, the kind where you like completely enclose the edge or you fold under the edge. Uh, there's reverse applique, um, yeah, and, and then after you've done all of the sewing part of the applique, there's so many different kinds of things that you can do to it afterwards as well. Embellishing with color, with fabric paint, or um, you can, like on the reverse appliques, you can then like snip open some parts. Uh, there's so many things you can do. What I more often than not do is raw edge applique. And that is basically just, you cut out your fabric, you apply some sort of stabilizer or um, a spray adhesive or something, and then you put that onto your fabric and then you sew around it. So, and then using a straight stitch. And that's basically the simplest way of doing it. Uh, and you can do that with, multiple layers, you can do that with a single layer. Um, an example of a single layer one is this, what I did for my daughter. And here, this is really simple actually, because what I did is I took the fabric, um, I'm gonna lift up my dress here a little bit. <laughs> this fabric has leaves all over it. And what I did is I had a scrap of those leaves. And then I followed the contours just outside. You can still see the lines here. And what I did is I cut around it. No, wrong, sorry, I didn't cut yet. I applied some adhesive to the back first. There's this uh, double-sided iron-on adhesive. In North America, the most common of that kind of stuff is called heat and bond. And it's basically it comes on, there's a paper on one side, kind of like baking paper. And on the other side, there's an adhesive. And you can feel it's kind of rough. And what you do is you iron this onto the back of your piece of fabric, and then you can cut it out. So I'm actually going to I have a, a little project cut out here that I can, that I'm gonna start after. And I use this cool little shark fabric. And I am going to take one of these little sharks. I'm gonna iron my adhesive onto the back of it. Then I'm gonna cut it out, iron it onto the shirt that I'm making, and then just simply sew around it. That is the most simple form. With this one, I also did the, I sewed the lines of the leaves as well. So you can go into more detail and do what is called thread painting. That is most often done free motion. So without the feed dogs up, so feed dogs down with an embroidery foot looks something like this. Uh, let's see here. 
can see that. There's, it's basically just a circle and there's no feed on it. It, um, it lets you move the fabric underneath and you have your feed dogs down then it lets you move your fabric underneath. And um, then you just kind of, you kind of push the pedal and go and you just kind of move your fabric. And the key to using an embroidery foot is that um, you need to move fairly regularly. So if you want even stitches, you kind of get into it after a little while. It's kind of hard to do at first, but you get into it. Um, Bernina is really cool. They have this um, cool little foot called the BSR. And it basically, um, you can kind of plug it in if you have that on your machine. And it has a little sensor on the bottom, which measures how fast you're moving your fabric. So if you have moved um, really fast, the needle will move really fast. If you're moving slowly, the mo needle will move slowly. And then you'll always get an even stitch, no matter how fast or slow it. I mean, you can't do super jerky movements, but it's really cool. Um, so that's for with thread painting is you can do that. There with this one is kind of what I did. I went along the leaves, but there's, and you can take like different colors too. I just used, um, what did I use a dark red on this one to kind of blend in a little bit and then to kind of keep it um, subtle, but still visible. So that is a basic raw edge applique. And you can see this has been washed a couple times already. So you can see how the edges kind of curl up and you can see the bottom here, especially where I didn't go all the way out to the edge. You can see it a little bit. Um, I kind of feel like that adds a little bit to the charm of it. Uh, but then there's the enclosed edge that you can do as well. So this was just with a theoretically straight stitch. This I did with the embroidery foot, um, but you can enclose the edges. So if you're using say a woven for your applique, which is totally possible, um, you can use a satin stitch like I did on this bin. Uh, let's see if you can see it. So what I did is I printed from my computer. I think I used Comic Sans, looks kind of like that. Um, and then I traced that onto my um, double-sided adhesive. There's the paper backing takes on pencil very well. Um, so I traced it. Oop, I traced my letters onto the backing, ironed that onto my fabric pieces, and then cut it out, ironed it on here, and then sewed around it with a satin stitch. If you're gonna do a satin stitch, then the best foot to use is, of course, a satin stitch foot. There we go. That is a satin stitch foot. It has an open toe, it has a little groove, whoop, a little groove in the bottom to allow those stitches to pass under easier. You can use a regular foot. If you don't have one of these, that's totally fine. It works. You might need to help move the fabric uh, along underneath it. If you can lower the pressure on your presser foot, that is also an option because um, if you have multiple layers, depending how many layers you have as well, if you have multiple layers, it can get quite thick and then it won't, the fabric won't move so well anymore. So you could use a dual uh, transport or a walking foot. That's a possibility too. Um, and if you have a satin stitch foot for doing satin stitching, then that's a really good thing because it has like a groove to help let the stitches pass through underneath too. Whereas a regular foot is flat. Um, walking foot. Uh, it looks like this. It's a fairly chunky thing. I also have a satin stitch attachment, an open toe attachment on my, um, for mine. And you stick this, basically you stick this on where the needle gets screwed in. And then as you sew, it goes up and down with it. And you can, I don't know if you can see that, but like the little feet here are moving and it helps move the fabric from the top as well. So if you have really thick, lots of layers, a walking foot 
is very handy to have as well. Um, another thing that is very handy to have, also optional, but makes your life a little easier, is a bobbin with more tension. I don't recommend changing your bobbin tension. There's like screws that you can do it. It's possible. I don't recommend it because it's really, really hard to get it back to the normal tension again. So what I have is I have a separate color. So I know that it's a special one. It has a higher tension, which means when I'm sewing, the loops from the bottom thread won't come up to the top. So um, more often than not, I have either black or white in my bobbin. It's a bit of a thinner thread too. Um, and uh, it's an embroidery bobbin fill thread. It's, uh, it's a little bit thinner, it slides through easier, it makes less bulk, but you don't have to use it. You can use regular thread, you can use a matching thread. I like using it because it also helps to keep the stitches from the bottom so that you don't see them on top, basically. But regular bobbin works for that as well. Um, speaking of thread, there's a few different options there as well. Uh, you can use matching thread that matches every color of your applique. You can use just black thread, which is what I did on this one. It also has been washed a few times. You can see it's a little bit puckered, but uh, eh, if I could hold it properly. There. Um, just black thread all around gives a nice outline. And in the end, um, it looks better if, especially if you're not gonna be doing any extra painting or whatever, cause then you get nice outline for it as well. You don't have to do that because sometimes you have really tiny pieces and then you wanna use a matching thread. Otherwise your tiny piece looks even tinier. Um, then there's also an option to use clear thread. There's like, I know Madeira has, it's uh, just a clear thread that you can use on your machine. Um, this, for this one, I would definitely recommend tighter bobbin or loosen your needle tension at least. Um, and this, you don't really see, you can, you can still see like the perforation holes but you don't see the um, the color as much. And then in the end, then you can just go nuts with shading and fabric paint and stuff. And it makes a huge difference the between uh, like the before and after of having shaded or having sewn it and then shaded it. It's really cool what you can do just with that. Um, what else was I going to say? Ah, yes. One thing to check, um, to keep in mind when you're applicating is where you're placing your appliques. Um, I mean, we all know there's fabric placement boo-boos that happen when you possibly um, highlight your boobs or <laughs> your butt or something. Uh, it happens uh, to the best of us and to the worst of us. <laughs> and um, so you just keep that in mind uh, when you're doing it. Like on this one, for example, I wasn't sure, uh, where is it? I wasn't sure how it would turn out because I actually didn't have a whole, the whole leaf. Uh, this part I had cut out on one of the other things that I made with the fabric. And so I was like, hmm, I really wanna use it because it's really nice and it would fit here perfectly, but I wasn't so sure. And then I just kind of, I just did it and uh, luckily it turned out fine. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't, but yeah, like with this one here, I kind of did an awkward over the nipple kind of thing with my thread. I mean, it's not too bad, but yeah. So that's another thing you can applicate is cording, of course. Um, but yeah, something to keep in mind that uh, placement is very important. Um, if you're going to applique cording, I recommend a cording foot. Yes, I have tons of feet. Uh, <laughs> uh, this it has a groove here to help the cording pass. There we go. You can see to help the cording pass underneath um, 
between the fabric and the foot. Um, you can do it with the regular foot. Then I just recommend using like a little, a little hump jumper or something beside the foot so that your foot isn't squashing down the cording because otherwise it'll squash it around. Yeah. I sewed this one on with a straight stitch, I believe. Yep. And it, it worked just fine. <laughs> So for that, what else do I have here? Ah, yes, take pockets into consideration. Um, when you are doing an applique on a hoodie or a shirt or something, chances are that you will have pockets, especially on hoodies. Um, you wanna make sure that if you already have your pocket sewn on, that you don't have to put your applique on afterwards. So make sure you put, do all of your applique before, unless your pocket also is sewn on. For example, on the hemlock hoodie from Buttons and Bibs, the pocket gets sewn on, right? And as with this one, I changed, this is also a hemlock hoodie. I changed the uh, pocket on this one to be a, a kangaroo pocket. And I was like, yeah, and I'm gonna put on an applique and it's gonna look so cool. And then I was like, um, but, I can't put the applique where I, I was actually planning on putting it here. And then I realized I have to sew this pocket on. So what I did is I made the pocket, instead of going straight across, I made it curve down a little bit and then it worked. But if, yeah, you just have, that's just an, another thing to take into consideration. Um, this one I actually did. There are appliques that you can do on your embroidery machine too. So cool. But we're not going to do that today because I'd have to switch my machine around and everything. But <laughs> um, oh, I wanted to show there's the um, 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 reverse applique as well. This is an example where, oops, where you have um, a fabric on top and what you basically do is you sew on a fabric to the bottom and then you will sew across across that multiple times leaving the space in between and afterwards you cut your main fabric very carefully so you don't cut the bottom too and then you cut it and then you get kind of like this distressed look kind of thing. Uh, I really love it. I think it can, it, there's so many cool ways you can use it. You can do it like if you have a pattern fabric and then use a solid in the back, like I did on this. And then you can just kind of see bits of the main fabric still, or you can do it the other way around if you have a solid and then do a pattern underneath it. And then you can kind of see the pattern through the, the um, through the front solid as well. Um, there, I wrote actually a blog post on, it's on the Sew PDF blog. I think it's the first one on there even. Um, I think Adrian's gonna link it in the chat. Um, you can see, um, yeah, there it is. You can see there, you can read how I did, how I did the reverse applique on the heart. I think I did the heart and the blog. And then I, uh, there's a, a video linked as well to YouTube where I did um, one on a, a little train and a little star as well. So if you're a video learner, there's a video version. And if you're a reading learner, there's a blog post as well that you can check out. Uh, what else? I had to write down what I wanted to say, otherwise I would forget. <clears throat> Yes, if you are going to draw your own applique, uh, remember that, and especially if you're using this method with the, the heat and bond, that it will be mirrored. So if you are tracing onto your heat and bond, ah, yes, like with, the, with, with my socks bin here, um, I think you see it mirrored right now already. But <laughs> um, if, you are going to especially do words, it's important that you trace it mirrored to what you want the final thing to be. 
So what I did here is I not only printed it out and traced it, I traced it through my window. <laughs> I held it up to the window with the writing facing away from me. Then I put that over it and I traced through the window um, so that I had on here the mirrored version of it because then you're going to iron it to the back of your fabric, which will then go onto the main thing and then that will be right side up. So remember if you're gonna be tracing or doing something like that, just remember that it will be mirrored if you use this method. And this is the method I most often use. It's the easiest or it, it you can you can layer the easiest with it and it just, uh, it's easier than working with floppy fabric when you can use this first. Um, yeah, so there are, I keep saying layered. I showed you a couple of simple ones with a uh, single layer and then there are layered appliques. Um, I showed you the one, this one here, that's different fabrics. I had the green one, I had the strawberry one, I had the glasses. And so there's lots of different fabrics on this one. And with layering, I also find it super useful to use this. Uh, depending on how many layers you have, you may want to use spray adhesive for the bigger pieces because with the heat and bond, there is a feather light, it's called, that is super light. Um, I haven't tried it, so I don't know how light it is, but um, that might be an option if you have many layers. And speaking of layered appliques, I am going to show a layered one today. And not only just any layered one, one that I drew, this cute little penguin. Oh, I can't see it. Hang on. Ta <laughs> this cute little penguin I drew, and Adrian digitized it for me. And I wrote a little tutorial. And you can get this little cutie as a template with a full tutorial. And um, it's going to be for free when you sign up for the newsletter for Sew PDF. So that will be, uh, and I think Adrian is gonna link it as well in the chat down below. And you can download it and um, print it out as well. And the pattern looks like this. So there's a, a layering guide, there's the separate pieces, and then you will layer those all together. So Adrian just put it into the chat there if you wanna download it or and or print it out and we can do it together if you want. So this is the, there's two sizes. There's a large one and a smaller one. And I have done on these pants as a patch, the smaller one. So it works really well to the, the small version to do as a patch or on say a hat um, or on some cute little mittens. These are the ones from Menta Patterns. I sewed these a, a while ago, last year sometime, when I decided to try my hand at drawing an applique. And um, Menta Patterns actually has lots of templates as well in their Facebook group, in the files. There's a, they have like a whole bunch of different kinds of simple single layer templates that you can get from their files. It's really cool. And... Yeah, so the penguin. Uh, I think that's, I need to check here what else I was gonna say first. Yes. Oh uh, yeah, Polywoggles has, um, there's also a so PDF partner and they have really nice appliques as well on their website. They are one layer ones. So um, materials, I was gonna say, I covered the feet um, and the interfacing. A very useful thing for materials to have is a tweezer. 
super, super useful for layering, especially when you get down to some of the really small pieces like the eyes or the beak. Very handy to have tweezers. And also for peeling the, the, the backing off of the adhesive, very handy to have. Um, yeah, Heat and Bond has, they have a bunch of different kinds of adhesive. They have the feather light, they have the light, soft stretch light. Um, you can, I assume that it would be good for knits. I haven't tried it, so I can't really say. But uh, from what I've read, it would be really good for doing if you have a bigger knit applique. I mean, on something that is like this, it's not so bad because first of all, it's a dress and it's not, doesn't need much stretch. But even if it did, it's not so bad if it's, if you just do the straight stitch and the regular heat and bond because it still moves. Um, and they're usually fairly small, depending on what you do. Um, the appliques are usually fairly small and it doesn't make a huge difference if it doesn't stretch. So I don't know, I don't know how heavy the soft stretch is, but there's that. Um, the ultra, Heat and bond is good for using on the back of a patch. I wouldn't use it to build the applique or assemble it, but if you're gonna use it as a patch, then you can use that. Um, it's supposed to hold even through washing without sewing. Again, I haven't tried it yet, but <laughs> and we don't have it here in Switzerland. So uh, I have a different one that I'm trying out now. Um, so, uh, yeah, we can go through the um, steps for building this little penguin pal. Um, like I said, the file is in the chat down below. If you would like to download and print it, um, you can do that. And once you've printed, you'll have either the small one or the big one. I would recommend starting with the large if you haven't done many appliques before or something. It's just the pieces are not quite as tiny, so they're a little easier to use. I also recommend doing the method with the adhesive because the spray on is just, it works. It's just um, more tedious. You get really sticky fingers and you can, your needle might get gummed up as well. So you just have to like take the needle off and run your fingers over it a few times every once in a while so that the gumminess comes off because the spray adhesive is usually a bit gummy still. Um, so you will do, if you're doing the version with the adhesive of the um, iron-on adhesive, you would then trace the individual pieces, including the dotted lines. So there's some dot, uh, dashed lines here on the face and on the belly. Those are the next layer that will be on this main layer. And you can use that to help place, for example, the face pieces or the bot belly um, and the feet here. So it makes it a bit easier for placing. And once you've traced your little penguin pal, you will have, here, I got it here. Once you've traced them, you can rough cut them. So you can see I traced here, I got my dashed lines, although I made them solid here. And um, now I rough cut it. So what I'm gonna do with this, little piece now is I'm going to put it on my scraps because this is a scrap buster challenge. We are going to use up some scraps. Well, use up this. I mean, this is a big scrap for a tiny little penguin, but still it uses scraps and um, beware. You might end up saving teeny tiny little scraps. Even if you start doing applique because Really, you can even use this. Yeah, this was uh, a t-shirt that I cut apart because I wanted the thing that was on the front to applique onto something else. And now I have lots of scraps to use for more appliques. <laughs> so then you would iron the template onto the fabric. And I'm gonna do that quickly here. 
because I also want to mention, can you see this? You're going to iron it onto the back. This one is a bit hard to see. Can you hear me okay when I'm over here? I'm going to put my little pal onto my fabric. And when I am doing this, I have a baking paper underneath, underneath my fabric, and I have a piece of baking paper that I put over top because the edge of the adhesive still kind of peeks over the sides. And I just don't like having a gummy iron. <laughs> so that helps with that. It doesn't need to be long. It'll hold already because we're going to be doing more ironing afterwards as well. So just enough so that it holds, not going to come off. I'm going to let it dry, uh, cool off a bit because it gets, it holds better if you let it cool before moving it around. I just snipped it off of the big piece. So I have a easier to cut afterwards. And then I'm gonna do the feet and the eyes as well. I have my little, little scrap for beak and feet and my little scrap for the eyes and the belly. Oh no, I'm missing my belly. Hmm. Yeah, teeny tiny pieces get lost easily. <laughs> I don't know where my belly is, but I will give you one. So I'm going to put it on the back. Just briefly pressing it on, you can still see the pencil lines. And I also transferred the numbers. So the piece numbers you're gonna wanna use as well because they all have numbers on them. See number one, now we've got number two. And that's the order of, order of operations, <laughs> the way you're going to be layer, layering them. So piece number one will come first, piece number two goes on top of that layer and so on and so forth. My little white one. So. And I don't know where the belly went. I had it traced. Trace it again. So like I said, with a pencil, it works really well. And then you just place it onto the, um, I can't even see what I'm doing. Huh? This is there we go. Um, place the adhesive onto the pattern and then trace the individual pieces. The belly is number two. Here are my dotted lines, uh, dashed lines. Keep saying dotted, they're dashed. So, and then, uh, get on the white. Oh, rough cut. Can you tell I'm a little nervous? <laughs> yeah. I do 
um, like colors together. If you can see this now. But like here I did the beak and the feet all together on the same on the same little my light is horrible. I put it all on the same piece and on this one too. And because that way I save adhesive, I save <laughs> scraps <laughs> and uh, it's easier to cut it all out together as well. So after you've got it cut, um, ironed onto your pieces, uh, fabric pieces, you can cut out the individual ones. And this time I'm gonna try not to lose it. So I've got my little feet here. I would not use um, your best fabric scissors for this step because you're cutting through paper as well because there's the paper backing on the adhesive. Uh, you, you do need some scissors that cut well because obviously you're cutting fabric as well but don't use your best fabric scissors because there is paper. This is teeny tiny. I have the small version here. My kids have all ordered penguins. They saw it when I was working on the pictures for the tutorial. They all saw it and all three were like, oh, is that for me? Is that for me? That one's for me. And I want a shirt with that. I want a sweater with that. I want some pajamas with that on the front and on the back and on the pants. And <laughs> So yeah, they've all already already or, already ordered their penguins. <laughs> and I have a little project ready to go here as well. For actually for one of the other ones. I have a bigger one ready as well that's already layered. And that is going to go on a shirt, a hip to be square shirt for my boy because he wanted a shirt. He said he needed a, a shirt with a penguin on it. So that's what I'll make him. Now I have a bit of time again. But the hip to be square is really cool for using up scraps too because there's so many it's like a whole bunch of built-in color blocking and, and uh, from Goober P Designs in case somebody did, was wondering because that is um, a super cool pattern. And I already had one printed in his size, so that helps too. <laughs> These pieces are so tiny. <laughs> The tiny one is, um, the, the small is quite small. So you need patience when doing this one because it is very small. But the large one is um, a lot easier because the pieces are a bit bigger. So I got all my little pieces cut out and now I'm going to layer them. So oh, that actually works better even. <laughs> So, um, yeah, so I got my template here with my assembly guide, my little penguin pieces. And now I am going to peel off the number one. And like I said, with the tweezers, this works really well or a lot better anyway. Mm -hmm. Always when you want to show something, it doesn't work. Try a different corner. There we go. You take off the backing and don't throw it away yet because there are still the placement guides for the after for the ones that come on afterwards. So now I am just going to tap this in place. So not very long, just so that it 
it holds on my paper now. See, like it's stuck on my baking paper, but it will peel off again super nicely because it's got like that um, baking paper magic. <laughs> Number two is the belly. So I'm just gonna take this off the belly now. And here, um, it is slightly oval, it's a bit narrower at the top and wider at the bottom. So uh, I, when I traced it, I wrote the number right side up so that I also know which way is up. So, I mean, you can see it afterwards when you put it on your template that it'll be straight as well. I can also take my little penguin with the dashed lines and just check if it's in the middle there, a little bit to the side. So, and it comes out the bottom a little bit. So the, the black is a bit shorter than the white because that way the black won't be peeking out the bottom when, uh, when I'm sewing, got it sewn together. So. That's on there. And then number three are the feet. Oh, wait. Yeah, feet. Number three. Got one here. Now, these can be done, um, you can like tap that one in place before putting the next one on, or you can do them both at the same time. One after the other is advisable because uh, sometimes the first one will shift when you've got the second one and then but this one turned out fine. <laughs> uh -huh. And then we have number four is the beak. And here, I can just put it kind of where it would go, or I can take my template here and see where I drew on the, the beak piece. I actually placed it quite perfectly um, and then you can use your tweezers as well to move it around and uh, to make sure that it's in the right place or not crooked I'm just going to tap that in place now and then take the eyes so these are really small So as you can see, it does add a bit of time to your project, but I think it's totally worth it. So, oh, this one's upside down. So, and again, I can take my little template here. And I have them a bit further down than what it is on the template. But I mean, of course, you can place them where you feel they look the best, or you can use the template guide. On this one, it's fairly simple. There, when you get into more layers, then it is advisable to check that they're on the place where the template is because then otherwise if you get lots of things shifting then uh, yeah it might not turn out as nice so here's my little penguin on my baking paper let's see if i can turn the light over here there we go there he is and i'm just going to peel them off here 
So here you want to wait a little bit for the adhesive to cool off a bit too before you peel it off because otherwise it might the adhesive will still stick to the paper if it's not cooled off all the way yet. But it goes fairly quickly because you're actually not having the iron on it for a very long amount of time anyway. So then we have the little penguin and on the back you can see it's kind of shiny. That's the adhesive. And that we will then put onto our um the yeah whatever it is that you're gonna put it onto in the case of this i just put it on a scrap piece of the background fabric and then i sewed it on there and then afterwards i added the 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 heavyweight um uh, adhesive and then i cut it out and then i ironed it onto there and with this one, I will be putting it onto a shirt, but I don't have that shirt cut out yet. So I will be showing the spray adhesive bit. With spray adhesives, um, this is the bigger one. Uh, you can see he's a lot sloppier. It is, the sides are curling up a little bit. I don't know if you can see that, but it's just not as, um, as firm as the other one. And uh, all I've done so far is uh, like put it together. If you're doing the spray adhesive method, um, I would recommend if you have heat and bond or something like that to do the smaller pieces with that because it's a lot easier than, because if you're gonna spray these, <laughs> they kind of fly all over the place when you spray it because then it gets, blown around and yeah but it does work it's just a little bit more tedious i like to use for spraying i knock my iron over i have like this little cardboard box set up <laughs> it's pretty simple it's just a cardboard box <laughs> that I put on because the spray bottles work best when they're held up straight. Where do I have one? So of course they work best when they're held straight and when you're doing this, then they sometimes get gunky and don't work very well. So I use this to have kind of a back that it doesn't spray all over everything. And this for the stuff that then sprays down, it all kind of gets caught. It's just a cardboard box, but it works. And for this penguin pal, um, after spraying it, you always get a little bit of stickiness on here too. That's not so bad. It actually is helpful because then it will hold. And that stickiness, these most of these spray adhesives, this is um, this is a wash wash out one. This one, um, if you use spray adhesive, I would recommend using one that doesn't wash out because then when it's washed out, it won't be held on in the middle especially if you have a bigger applique it could cause waviness and wrinkling in after a few washings whereas with with the heat and bond it doesn't wash out and it just holds longer and it stays nice longer um and if or just get a spray adhesive as well that has uh, that's permanent there are permanent ones i actually have one here but it requires a heck of a lot of shaking before I can use it. So I'm not going to use it right now. <laughs> but this one, so you just kind of spray it. And I don't know if you can see it got kind of white. Most of these spray adhesives have kind of like a netting, like they spray kind of a netting. And that is good because then you can, whoops, I just folded it over on itself. Then you can see where you've sprayed and um, you can, uh, yeah, you can check if you've got all of the, all of the, all the way out to the edge, which I didn't. So this is where you just kind of get sticky fingers because then you have to grab them 
and rip it off. I'm going to be putting it on this center panel on the front. I'm going to mark my center first. And then I will take my little penguin pal and put it more or less in the middle here. So this is my center panel piece of the hip to be square in size six for size reference there. So then I just put it on here. And now I am going to let that dry a little bit as well because it really gums up the needle otherwise. <clears throat> but there is the large one on the panel. For tracing and cutting this one, you have a this is what it looks like after cutting out your template pieces. You know, it's a little creepy. <laughs> but um, the beak and the eyes get cut right out so that you can trace through the hole instead of having a teeny tiny little piece to trace around. And these are the, this would be for the feet here. Again, cutting a hole out of the main template piece so that you don't have um, another small piece that you need to keep track of for tracing. And for layering, um, it's also, you can use the, the main template piece to get the basic shape around the body and the belly. And then afterwards for placing the eyes, another handy um, plus side of having it already cut out here is that you can then place it on, on your body piece when layering and then you can just stick your pieces right in the holes and they're already placed correctly. What time is it now? Oh, it's already almost nine o'clock. So then we can sew this. Like I said, um, lots of different kinds of feet you can use. Lots of different techniques. Um, different stitches. I usually stick with a straight stitch or free motion. Um, I prefer free motion because then I'm not constantly lifting up my presser foot. Um, I mean, I have a, a knee lift on my machine. So when I, I can use my knee to lift the foot, super, super handy. But it's still an extra step. So when I, when I do appliques, I usually do um, with free motion. And I usually use the BSR because it does that cool little stitch regulating. It's very handy. Then when I sew an applique, 
I like to start with the smaller pieces first and kind of go from the center outwards because oftentimes if you'll start in the center uh, in on the outside then sometimes it'll get really puckered and then you'll have wrinkles on the inside so a little tip start from the inside and work your way out I like to do the smaller pieces um, a bit before as well uh, I'm going to start actually with the belly and the eyes because I already have white on my machine and ah and um, a tearaway interfacing on the bottom. So the, I have a knit fabric here and it's fairly stretchy. And if I just put this under my machine and start sewing, chances are it's gonna have some bulges afterwards, like around the top or around the sides. Um, most of the time that can be um, remedied with a, a steam press, but uh, with washing, sometimes it'll pucker up again. So I like to put the tearaway interfacing on the bottom. Um, and I actually am also going to spray a little bit of the wash away adhesive on it because then it holds better. I'll stop on there. Now for sewing um, with the um, open toe foot, you can do it too. Um, for the smaller pieces, I actually you can't really see how. Huh? For the smaller pieces, I actually like using the open toe foot for the eyes, for example. Um, especially on the very tiny one, I did uh, I did that all with the with the open toe foot because with the open toe foot, you can just really see where your needle is and where the next curve is and the edge of the fabric, and it makes it a lot easier. That's my thread. So if you were going to do it free motion, you can use the um, oh gosh, what was I gonna say? You get that anytime too. <laughs> Start saying something and then forget. It'll come to me. <laughs> ah, yes, bring up the bottom thread, I was going to say. Because that way you won't get a, a bunch of um, loops on the bottom. So there we go. I went around a few times now on it. 
Um, I went one time over, back, and then over again. And I do that because it gives it a good hold. It also gives it um, a bit of a contour. I mean, even, even though I used also a white thread, you can, and you can still kind of see that it has a bit of a contour. Um, I could do like a feather pattern or something on it on the belly as well and do like that would then be going into kind of thread painting uh, for that, but I'm not going to do that on this one. So I have my belly sewn on and so on and so forth until you have the whole thing sewn on. And then afterwards you can tear away the thing on the back. And then you can use some fabric paint or something to make it just a little more, um, this is kind of not so great, huh? So, so here you can see it has actually just the white eyes. So what I did on this one is I put a little black dot in it as well with fabric paint and then a little white dot on there to get like a little bit more lifelike and more shine on the belly. I did a bit of shading on the bottom and then with white I put kind of little um, like little reflection kind of thing off the side. So he looks a little bit more 3D as well. And that's something that is really cool to do with uh, fabric paint. Um, some people use um, stamp pads. There's like fabric stamps. Uh, I've seen people who use those. I prefer using the paint and it's just a regular fabric paint and, uh, and just a regular small brush. My favorite, they're like, it's really tiny and it's a little bit flat um like it's not round it's kind of flat and it works really well i find for doing the contours and um for shading <clears throat> i like to use a bit of a um a wider one can you can see that Let's see here there we go. so it's a little bit uh the wider one thicker one with a wider base and that's really handy for doing like shading to do like the bigger spots uh, yeah and fabric paint is like you can get the little bottles or and like the stamp pads and and um yeah and then you can spruce it up that way as well Nisha we had a question in the chat about your stitch um about what stitch link you, length you were using. Uh, yes, I use a two to two and a half um, stitch length. So even with the with the BSR foot, you can set the stitch length as well. And here it's I have it at two. Um, with this little one, I started at two point seven five, but I it was already too uh, too long. To get around, especially the smaller ones, you want to use a really short stitch length, so like a two more likely. Um, on the bigger ones, you can go with a longer one. It also will make it a little more stretchy if you use a longer one. But um, yeah, I didn't see that. And there's the chat on the bottom. Huh? Is there anything else? Yeah, just a straight stitch. Um, like I said, you can use a straight stitch, you can use a blanket stitch, you can use a satin stitch um, or wovens. Um, I would recommend using a satin stitch because otherwise you can really see the fraying or um, you can use a straight stitch there too, depending on how, how many times you go around as well. But uh, for wovens, I would use a satin stitch and then you can vary the width. Uh, I would leave the length fairly close because then um, it just it, it helps it keep from fraying, especially if it's something that's going to go through the wash. I mean, on this one, I easily could have used a straight stitch because um, this 
isn't it's just the sock bin. <laughs> um, or a blanket stitch can be used too. Again, I wouldn't recommend it on the smaller ones. For putting these, I put these on a patch first, basically. So what I did is I um, I built the applique, and then I put it on a scrap fabric. It's kind of hard to see. Uh, I don't know if you can see it better this way. On a scrap fabric, you can kind of see it in the middle here. If my light would work better. Um, and then I cut it out close. Um, I applied some more of the adhesive and then I cut it out close around the, uh, the, the picture. And then I sewed the pat as sewed it on as a patch basically with a blanket stitch i don't know if you can see that but for do building the applique itself and sewing the pieces together i use a straight stitch or multi-layer appliques are there any other questions does anyone have any pressing questions 